Jay's Barbecue. Hickory smoked brisket, pulled pork, half chicken, sausage, wings, baby backs, and the biggest baked potato you've ever seen. 100 East Nolana, barbecue restaurant, catering, and drive through Gotta love Jay's. Welcome back for the break. This week's U.S. Air Force Player of the Week goes to Tres Barreras from Sherland and a big win over Donna. Tres Barreras, he passed for 269 yards, two touchdowns, and he rushed for 66 yards. This is the second time that Mr. Tres Barreras has gotten this award. Congratulations. Now, Mr. Barrera is also involved in the U.S. Air Force Play of the Week. Here you see him play action. He drops back, and he hits number 16 in stride, Christian Martinez, for a 70-yard touchdown. Good job, Mr. Barrera. This week's U.S. Army leadership goes to Coach William Dean for Brownsville Pace. It's not always about winning. Us coaches, we have to build character, and we have to build productive citizens. Coach Dean, win or lose, is doing that. Good job, Coach Dean. Let's go, let's go. Uh, I'd say, you know, if we go to a coaching style, I'm, I'm kind of old sure school. Right. Uh, I expect the kids to get coached. I expect every coach to be working at all times, you know. Be involved in the drills, set drills uh, uh, for game speed, set them for game situations. It's been adversity since I got here, and uh, it's been a struggle. We're a young team. One of the things you have to do, and, and you know, I, I focus on it every week, you got to focus on the positives. you got to be positive about what you're doing got to be positive with the kids. We have plenty of negatives going on right now. And if you can take uh, the negatives away, focus on what the kids are doing well, and build upon that, that's what you want to do all the time. Obviously, you want to show them some, some of the negatives. you got to critique a kid. Uh, you got to critique your players. you got to critique your coaches. you got to critique what you're doing offensively and defensively. But you still got to build on what you're doing right and build on the positives all the time. Quick look at the standings in 31-5A, the Murderers Row, the Crazy District. You got West Laco East and McAllen 4-1. PSJ North is a half game up technically, two games, two losses in the loss column, and West Laco and Memorial right there. And that is not to say that some of the teams that are on the periphery will still not jump into the mix because we knew from the beginning this district would be crazy. Now 35A is a little bit easier to figure out. Sherryland right now, obviously with the big win over Donna, is undefeated. They're looking good. Donna, a one-loss team, tie with Edinburgh North, who had a bye week this week. Donna did defeat North. Now the four spot, Economides, Lincoln, Palmview, a lot of teams are still trying to get up there. Very few teams have been eliminated mathematically from the race, and of course nobody has clinched yet. The last 5A district is down in the Brownsville area. Los Fresnos and South are undefeated in district, and they're both looking really strong. Now Harlan's off the big win against Brownsville veterans, has one loss there. In second, of course, if you look at the number of teams, third and Brownsville veterans still holding on to that last spot. Keep an eye on Lopez. They can score. They got two wins in district. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that the Lobos will make the playoffs. And finally, in 32-4A, Mission and Mercedes, if things hold the way they are right now, the last game of the season will pit those two teams, and it might be for the district championship. Mercedes got to get past Ed Couch, and Mission's got to get past Vets this week. Vets and Ed Couch are right in the race. They're only one game back. The next three weeks are going to be crazy. So watch and check and see who wins. Looking for a bit of indulgence? Look no further than the new chocolate chip frappe from McCafe. Every bit as delicious as the McCafe frappes you love, only this one has a bit more, wow, bits of chocolate chips in every sip. Blended into mocha and caramel, all topped with a double drizzle of chocolate and sweet caramel. You've never had a frappe like this. Better get your hands on one quick. Cause it's only here for a little bit. The simple joy of the perfect sip. A lot of people don't know who we are, what we do. These girls showed up when they all dressed up and they thought it was a dance hall. <laughs> we wanted people to know that we're building materials. Lots of cash and carry building materials. People come in and they're surprised. Man, you guys have got great deals. I didn't know you was here. I mean, we've been here for over 40 years. And you thought the good old days were gone forever? We're still here. Lots of cash and carry building materials. <laughs> it's not a dance off, you know.
cheerleaders. And you're watching The Huddle on Fox 2. Go! Thanks to the Sheridan cheerleaders for bringing us back from the break. All right, time to get to our most popular segment, the picks segment. How will your team do against their team? Well, let's run them down, gentlemen, and take a look and see what's coming up in the upcoming week. McKellar Memorial tries to bounce back after their loss at PSJ North, but they go to an impressive Westlake East team at Bobby Lackey Stadium. Coach, where do you go? You know, you know McKellar Memorial, they have to win and stay in the playoffs. You know, it's that simple. Westlake East moved up from 4A, and they've been tough, and they have something to prove. I'm going with Westlake East in this one. I was very impressed watching Westlake East do what they did at Westlake High. I'll pick the Wildcats. Doc? Two physical teams. The game will be won and lost at the line of scrimmage. I don't see East losing right now, but like you said, Zane Memorial needs a win. Desperation time calls for desperate measures. Wessico High comes to McAllen to take on the Bulldogs. Two teams that are on the verge. One loss could knock them out. Yeah, you know, Wessico, they got to win and stay in. They, it's that simple, right? Matt Kai, they're in the top with Wessico East. You know, both teams are tough, aggressive. I'm, I'm going to go with my, Matt Kai and their finesse. That's what I'm going to go with. I like Matt Kai being on top of the district right now. Wessico trying to stay alive. Westville's got the toughest schedule left. McCallum's got what you'd say was the easiest. All three games at home. Uh, they can solidify their chances to win that district, and I believe that they do. All right, so we're all going back high. PSJ North takes on PSJ Memorial at PSJ Stadium. I like the Raiders in this game. Yeah, you know, the Raiders, they, they've shown some stuff. You know, they play good almost every week. You know, sometimes they struggle. PSJ Memorial's been on and off. You know, they started off pretty good in the beginning. You know, but the Raiders, I, I think they want part of that title. So I think uh, the Raiders will win this one. All right, two for the Raiders, Doc. I think it's all about ball control here because you don't want Borrego and Manny Mancias to have the chance to run wild. So you keep the ball away from them. PSJ North heretofore has shown that they can do that. I believe the Raiders also get a win. All right, so we're all in agreement with the Raiders. Los Fresnos and Brownsville Vets, that's a great matchup in 32-5A. I like Los Fresnos in this matchup. Well, it's hard not to because they're doing everything right. It's a very explosive team. I think Brownsville Vets showed a lot by hanging right with Harlington. They definitely want to improve their passing game from last week. I don't see them beating Los Fresnos, but I still think it's a good playoff ball club. I'm he leaves go me. I wasn't finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the upset here. You know, Brownsville Veterans has that quarterback, Marco Munoz. You know, he's yeah. a tough kid. You know, mm -hmm. he, he's tough. You know, Los Fresnos... You know, they struggle. They haven't struggled, right? They, they've been doing pretty good. But I just think that Bronzo Vets is going to put a, you know, put it on to Los Fresnos this week. Maybe they're due for a down game. Los Fresnos has played really well. And you always worry about 17-year-old kids that are going to have that down game. Yeah, that's might true. be this that's one. True. Coming off a big win off of Brownsville Pace. Maybe mm -hmm. this is the one that gets some, gets some uh, bit. Mission and Mission Vets going head-to-head. -head. Oh, man. Mission hey. Eagles <laughs> trying to go undefeated. Mission Vets, they're yeah. trying to stay alive. Coach, where you, do you, you know, go? You know, Mission, it's probably the best team right now in 4A. You know, they're tough. They're tough. They have a very strong defense. They're very aggressive. You know, Mission Vets, I saw them against that couch, and they struggled. You know, I know they beat uh, Roma this week, but I'm, I'm going with the Eagles. They're flying high. So. You're going with the Eagles, mm -hmm. Doc? Hard to pick against an unbeaten team. I know Mission, uh, Mission Vets saved its season with a big comeback against Roma. I'd say uh, I'd say Mission wins the game. I'm going Patriots at home. Hey, oh, wow. right, all right. Yeah. I get it. Ten yeah. touchdowns. Maybe yeah. you'll have eleven. We'll yeah. see. Mercedes, Ed Cal, Chelsea. <laughs> this is another big matchup. Mid Valley yeah. matchup, right yeah. there. You know, this has been a rivalry for almost 50, 60 years. I mean, the Tigers against the Jackets, and you know, it's always tough. I and mean, people are people are fired up for this game. You know, this week uh, past. You know, Mercedes struggle, Ed Couch also struggle, and I think they're looking ahead to this game. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's going to be a toss-up, but I'm, I'm going with the Yellow Jackets. All right, you're taking yeah. the Machina. Who are you taking? I like Mercedes in this one. I like, uh, oh. I like the way Mike Rodiba is getting his team fired up, and I think that they're hitting uh, all cylinders right now. Mercedes has got a great ground game. They can pound the ball with Guzman. Ed Couch, you know, they, you can't tell about that team because there's so many kids in and out of the lineup, different quarterbacks. I think they're turning on at the right time. That's going to be an amazing game. Okay, next. <laughs> you, gotta you, <laughs> you gotta pick. You gotta pick. You win it. Okay, well, let's see. Can't pick against La Machina in La Casa. There you go. Wow. The black hole. That's All right. right. Yeah. I'm taking Spanish. Mercedes. I like Isaiah Garz. I like what he's done. Mm -hmm. And, that, you know, that ground game is impressive. But when he needs mm -hmm. to air it out, we saw this past week he what did. he did with Valley View that he's capable Quintanilla, of. Quintanilla, that big catch on fourth and ten. Save oh. the game. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it goes. Hidalgo is at Port Isabel Ooh. taking on the Tarpons. Ooh. The Tarpons coming off a big game. Hidalgo had an impressive first half. They did. Couldn't finish out that third and fourth quarter. They, you know, just PI is too strong, right? I think PI right now is probably the strongest sub 4A school out there. Uh, I'm going to have to go with PI, even though you know Patterson's there with Iago, but 
you know, PI, they're, they're the, the tradition. Don't you know, go with the tarpons. Early on, we talked to Coach Ford, and he said that uh, this is going to be a build in progress. Mm -hmm. He just wants to put some W's up before he starts thinking about playoffs. I think Port Isabel's got their number this year, but don't count Hidalgo out. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, you know, they could have won that game against Rio Hondo. I felt like, I think they felt like they could have won. Against PI, it's going to be very difficult on the road. They're running the ball, 450 rushing yards. It's like old school PI, man. I don't think they can do it. But if they do, I'll be the first one to say thumbs up. In taps action, St. Michael's comes down to take on the St. Joe's Bloodhounds. I know that you're passionate about this one. Don't the you? Bloodhounds can get to 500. They played Antonian last week, gave up 66 points. That's one of the best teams in the state. I expect those guys, they've got some good players down there, some weapons. Adrian Gutierrez, or Adrian Guerra. Uh, Dan Gutierrez, Dan Matar, they got a lot of good players. And Brandon Olvera, the running back, is going to go over 1,000 yeah. yards. So I feel like St. Joe gets the win. I think St. Joe's going to pick up the wins on this one. You know, when you have to travel six hours to play a game, it takes a toll Sassy. on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, the Bloodhounds will win this one. Yeah. All right, there you go. Those are our picks. You can recap them always at 956sports.com. And make sure you log on. Become our friend on Facebook, facebook.com slash 956sports. Be on the lookout for us. Send us your feedback. If you didn't like Selber's picks or you don't like his <laughs> Or you don't point. like me in general. <laughs> Send that hate mail right there at the Facebook site, and we'll Facebook. take care of it. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks to our friends at Fox 2 and, of course, McDonald's for serving up another edition of The Huddle, brought to you by 956 Sports. And you know what I can't Let's forget? Let's get him, man. Yeah, we okay. can't Come on, man. Come on, Tony. Michael Gonzalez of the Mid-Valley Oh, that's Town. right. All right. Yeah, go good job, Mike. And being a part of the experience. Yeah. We'll see you next week here on Fox 2. Now, who's going to get me? Where are we going? Hey, who's going to get me? Let's see. What are we doing? Yeah, you're some quarterback right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um...